How do CSPs ensure their open source projects deliver on their full potential and help them to achieve their goals? I think the key is contribution, right, and a push um, that everybody contributes, yeah, that you don't have just a lead um, operator or lead vendor into the community, um, bring that into a real open dynamic uh, process there. And then you need to have a proper release and lifecycle uh, management around what you do in the community, right? So you need to have strict dates by, I don't know, 1st of April we want to deliver this, six months later we have the next release and climb up the, the environment. Yeah, make it tangible and, and consumable for, for us. Most journeys, they begin with a small step, um, but you know, sort of maybe pick something to start doing. You know, maybe start introducing automated testing in in your own labs. Then start, you know, don't have to go to production environment. Start just iterating slowly based on maybe upstream master branch from open source or start asking your vendors to start releasing to you more often and start practicing it in a lab. You know, pick sort of maybe one application that you can start that and start integrating automation in your own processes there and then you know figure out what you know what you don't know and, and, and grow. So in the case of the large telco folks what you're seeing like even today there there was um, actually a difference from AT&T and Verizon. Verizon talked about being an integrator AT&T is squarely a developer a DIY developer and those are two very different things um, requiring different kinds of resources, different kinds of developers. You know, the, the telco lifespan for products is five plus years often they're deployed, right? That's the joke, things never get um, backed out, you know, or uninstalled. Uh, and, and what that means is you have to have a long-term support plan in place. And this is actually where the DIY thing goes wrong sometimes because the, the developers that are at a telco SP um, you know, may decide they want to leave and go somewhere else, and then what happens? Then, then they have to hire contractors or an integrator or change plans. Um, whereas the other model where you're the integrator, you know, you're basically buying services. And you hopefully have a plan where if you're buying a distro from vendor A, you can buy the same or very similar distro from vendor B if it doesn't work out. But so it's, it's part of having a plan, a master plan for your, for your software and your um, products. Everything's moving so quickly, it can be hard for a tier two, whereas if you're in the open source community, people are very open to answering questions, very helpful. It's actually a way to accelerate your own learning by participating. Serving sort of the, the user needs, I mean, the networks are going to continue to advance. The desires of the application and services are going to continue to advance. So the community, I think, will continue to be there. Also, I think that there is just a hunger for the type of collaboration that open source brings that a lot of developers, once they experience open source, don't want to go back into their siloed walls anymore. The key really is collaboration here and a strong push by service provider and uh, they, their clear say of what their needs are. And their attention are not just in the closed room with some of the vendors, but really coming to the community and explaining those. If that happens, that already happens, we need more. If that happens more, that would be the key for success also for 5G. My recommendation would be to not reproduce, not fork and reproduce, but instead to try to work out how to stay in sync with the enterprise community. Let the enterprise side take the risk. Like all the startups and medium-sized corporations will adopt early and then the, inter the large enterprises will then adopt when the risk is low, and then Telco can then adopt on top of that once they know what works and what doesn't, and uh, help stabilize the entire system. Knowing that if you're joining these other communities that may not be directly focused on what you as maybe the Telco, uh, the whole domain, but also a specific SP. Yes, they're not focused on just that, but they're going to cover stuff that you aren't even looking for and handling cases as you scale out and realize, oh, we didn't know we need this, but now that we're at 5G and we're triple the size, how do we handle this sort of thing? Well, being part of that community, and that's part of the cultural shift, and then within that, you're gonna get a lot of the best practices and everything else to understand um, how to handle those things. Having uh, you know, participation in upstream communities to learn what's going on so that you're not blindsided by what you're expecting to do versus what is available. Um, 
understanding how you can build a end-to-end -end systems architecture using these components. Uh, you know, have a broader focus. What is the outcome you want to achieve? Uh, how do you want to deliver that service? What is my architectural constraint with respect to that particular service? And can I build an architecture today that evolves me to my you know, ideal um, reference point? And as long as you, you worry about these things, the, then you're probably in, in a safe place and moving in the right direction.